Hey guys, Brent Hole, Old House Journal. Okay, so we're here at this 1928 period revival house. We're gonna be looking at architectural metalwork, okay, and the fine craft. We're talking about steel windows and doors and how to restore them, how to recreate them, right? All today on the show, come join me. Okay, so today we're gonna to meet my good friend Doug Bracken with Wyman Metalcraft of Tulsa, Oklahoma, okay? He is the most knowledgeable guy on ironwork and metalwork I know. So I called him in here because we talked about those beautiful staircases before and how wonderfully crafted they were. What would it take to craft those again today? We've also decided on the outside of this house that instead of these terrible production windows that I drive me crazy. We're actually going to put back those original steel windows that we think are critical. We're going to line this outside. This wall's coming out and we're going to line that with those original steel windows, but we got to make one. So we're going to talk to Doug about that. Come on, let's talk to him. You know, these beautiful windows, it's so frustrating to me, right, that they took these out, they put a replacement window in, we saw these, the craftsmanship, I was saying on my first video, I think they're critical. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have a right. relationship with them, What's the, sure. what do you think? Sure, well, it's an interesting question, Brent, because the age of the house would tell us that it could be Criddle or possibly Hope's Windows out of Jamestown, New York, okay. 1928. That was a great period for steel casement windows right. all over the United States. Right. So it's, uh, it's an important question. I don't know that I can answer it until we start peeling back some of the paint. Sure. So, I mean, steel windows, right, they start in the 20s. You start to see them advertised. We start seeing them in period revival houses. They're really popular in the 30s into the 50s, right? Mm -hmm. So this would have been a little bit earlier. Steel windows have, uh, have been uh, preferred by distinguished and uh, discriminating homeowners for decades. So I think that what you've got here, whether it's Criddle or Hopes, uh, are some really fine windows that have been here almost 100 years. So th They're ready to go another 100 years with a little bit of care. Yeah, no, I agree. And so, um, which drives me crazy why they replaced them. So some of the distinctive things about these, you know, uh, windows, right? The hardware is brass, you think? Right, right. And we've got putty glazing, which we don't do anymore. That's what right. you were telling me earlier. Right? Yep, yep. So I brought an example here of a more modern way to set glass and they use uh, aluminum uh, aluminum glazing beads now to set the glass instead of putty when did that change i mean if you were dating houses and someone has steel windows in their house they're going to have putty glazing into the 50s or 60s correct or? yes yeah. okay. I, I think so and then the aluminum glazing beads become more popular particularly as the depth of the window for insulated glass yeah. The depth of that window increases and so this uh, it becomes harder and harder to putty set when you're using a 5 8 inch insulated unit so it's important to if you're trying to date your windows think about it from that perspective sure. the um the nice thing for you is we are actually uh needing to make another pair okay so we've got okay, that good. pair there we've got this pair there they're going on that outside wall and we need a you know a third piece is that possible? Can we get another one made? Sure, sure, yeah. So this, this profile is the same depth. This is a modern... So uh, this is the same company, 100 and, you know, years 150 later. 150 years later, uh, making so similar product. They're still making the same thing, great. We may not be able to match the uh, hinges exactly, but we can get pretty close. Okay. And so that's, that's where we need to go next. Well, and you, your company could custom craft those hinges if we needed, right? Sure, yeah, if that, was, if that was really important to the architect, we could certainly provide custom made hardware and hinges to match this uh, beautiful work. So Brent, uh, it's important to note that these windows have probably been moved right. or this was maybe an exterior room at some well, point. Well, what really happened is this is an addition. So we know that this was picked up from somewhere and moved here. Right. So. Now, even though we're both inside, inside, right. this is probably the original inside. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And we see that because you have this nice brass hardware here on the inside, and the cremone bolt is on the inside, and then uh, this outside surface is fairly smooth. And once you can get around here, you can see that the putty set glazing is on the outside, so it sheds water. Yeah. And now on the inside, this hardware, brass or bronze, this is a casement stay, is that right? Right. So 
instead of it blowing in the wind, right? Instead of it, you know, slapping closed or something, you would tighten these bolts or the right. screw and it would keep it locked in that position. It's kind of a friction, friction stay is okay. how that's referred to now as well. Okay. And there, there's another thing that's important while we're talking about hot rolled steel windows, because there's a lot of people making steel windows and doors these right. days. For sure. Hot rolled steel windows have these really exotic profiles that allow for a double rebate, a place where you can seal the door from the outside in two places when it's closed. That's not the same as a steel tube door or something that's made out of angle iron, which is very common Today, in contemporary sure. culture. Well, I mean, so the new steel doors that we sometimes put on our new house that clients ask for, like you're saying, are the tube, right? Where mm -hmm. they are taking, you know, raw tube steel and just cutting it, welding it together, sticking glass in it, as opposed to this, and you said hot rolled, and I don't know what that is. So that, that means that there's a very specific shape to this profile, okay. and it's very unusual. You don't, go to the, you don't go to the steel yard or the lumber yard and pick up these shapes. They come from one mill oh, really? in Europe. Okay. There's only one place that we all buy these from. So really? that's, that's, a, that's an important distinction for these uh, style of windows and doors. Okay, I've got one more thing to show you. Okay. It's this balustrade. I just think it's magical. And I need to know too, you know, what's going on there. It seems like today we just can't get this made anymore. Right, let's Come go on. have a look. Yeah. So the reason I fell in love with this, and first the client walked in and goes, do we have to keep that? And I was like, yes, we have to keep that, right? So one, I've seen these in, in English stair books, right? This, this almost musical looking piece here. I just fell in love with it because I've seen it before historically. Staub was, we've done another Staub house. He, I know he copies and looks and he had his inspirations and things like that. So I love this. At the same time, I, I don't know if there are 10% of guys in Fort Worth or even the country that can even do this. And so I guess I'm, you're here to help me back that up and, and walk me through one, how they made this and then just the skill level and just what your thoughts are when you see it. Sure. Well, Brent, it's a beautiful uh, railing and I'm glad that it hasn't been uh, overpainted and I'm glad it hasn't been removed, which is sure. oftentimes uh, what you find with older homes that have been uh, modified. This is a really good example of traditional wrought iron craftsmanship. And I say wrought iron in the sense like that true this, wrought is, iron? this is wrought iron, the alloy, uh, because of the date, 1928, we know that this is most likely wrought iron as opposed to modern steel, which is what we end up using most of the time now. But in addition to being wrought iron, the alloy, it is hand wrought. And so this is formed over an anvil, formed with blacksmithing tools, using drifts and punches and even this delicate water leaf here, which is uh, formed by using a repoussé uh, method out of fairly sh thin sheet iron to create this look. And there's a little bit of soldering you can see here where they've used a brazing torch and they've soldered this together, but overall the execution is extremely clean. You don't see all of those gloppy welds that so many uh, fabricators because they've uh, actually rely punch, on. punched through it. They've done their homework okay, here. Now you, you've said like six things I think are going to be confusing to people. First the thing, the wrought iron, right? Because wrought iron is this, people say, I need a wrought iron fence, right? And, right. and, and you can't get wrought iron anymore. So right? wrought, wrought iron is only available as reclaimed material. Wrought iron, much like cast iron, you leave them outside all day long, they never degrade. And wrought iron has a characteristic of being extremely corrosion resistant. Okay. When someone says, I want a wrought iron fence, they don't realize that what they're asking for is just so stupid expensive that they really don't want that. It's a term, right, that's been overused or misused or whatever, right? Because wrought iron is this historic material, right? So wrought iron is both a noun, it is historic material that's no longer available, and it's also a verb in common use. Right. So it refers to the act of True. working things that's by true. hand, hand point. wrought. Yeah. This is a great example of a wrought iron balustrade, which is made of wrought iron, the alloy, and it's hard hand work. So you've got them both right here. Okay, so you used, you used another word, repose. Did I say it right? Yes. Okay, yes. Uh, and that is this kind of sheet metal stuff. Is that? What is repose? Correct. So repose is uh, blacksmithing using very thin sheet metal. It could be brass or bronze, or it could be, in this case, wrought iron. So this, 
these leaves are, are formed by hand over the anvil, and that kind of sheet metal work is, uh, is it's closer to silversmithing okay. than it is blacksmithing. But in this case, what we have is we have the repoussé artistry matched with the blacksmithing artistry of this original balustrade. Well, and, this, and that repoussé is what you see when you go to France and England when they are decorating their iron gates, you see these delicate elements, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's those pieces. It's right. pretty common there. 1928, okay, yes. we're making this, right? Do they have mm -hmm. a King, you know, King Architectural Catalog where there's all the different parts and I, I need a water lily leaf or, or, right? They didn't do that. This was, you know, how would this have been made in 1928? The interesting thing about 1928 in that era is there were actually catalogs of leaves that you could buy oh, really? from Europe. Okay. Yes, I've got several in my shop. Nice. I've, got, I've got some examples of leaves not this leaf, this looks hand produced for this commission in my opinion. Okay. But I mean, even like these little pieces, would he have made those by hand or is yes. that a catalog? Right, no, none of, this, none of this comes out of a catalog. And in fact, in that time period, the number of shapes and sizes available to the metal fabricator doing decorative work like this was very limited. Yeah. So you would have squares and you would have rounds those would come uh, from the mill, but if you wanted a rectangle or another shape of a certain size, like this little collar right here, you had to make tooling, you had to use heat and a hammer, and you had to make it yourself. So you might have that available out of a catalog, but if you need that piece right there, you would have to make it on the anvil. One of the ways I look at new metal work and grade it, and you're the master, not me, is, is the shape of the, the, the twirl. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'll see it where it's like they, you know, bend it in a vice and bend it in a right. vice, and you see this crip, 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 crip. Right. This has a really pretty scroll. Was there a way to do that? And the way that it 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 becomes smaller there at the end, right? Mm -hmm. um, that had to be hand worked, right? Yes. This is a tape, a simple tapered scroll. These guys here. This is a uh, tapered ball scroll. So making these beautiful arcs is is kind of integral to the beauty of this thing, and and you can see how these blend nicely. Those yeah. radiuses come together very nicely. You know, you're describing here this beautiful nautilus shape right there, right? and this other one here and how those are put together and the fact that someone takes the time not to just take strap steel and weld it together mm -hmm. you know and you see these lumps but they've actually ground it out so that it's smooth and it comes together mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we're looking at you know hours of practice and detail that right. just takes longer right it's right. just once you make your tooling once you make a uh, special hammer dies to create these tapers and these collars and these shapes right here. Once you do all that, a skilled, uh, a skilled artisan, it might take him 20 or her 20 or 30 hours to put one of those together this way, this right. nicely. All right, cool. Thank you so much. This has been so helpful. And I hope that you guys have appreciated what beautiful metalwork is and how this makes a house better, right? And how this handcrafted work uh, and these details are where the magic is. So the beauty of these houses that we love, right? This is 1928. A lot of it is in the craftsmanship and we've learned today about the metalwork and just the value of those things. Keep these materials, right? Even if there's something in your historic house that you don't love, right? That may have been dated a little bit. Remember the craftsmanship that goes into it. Those are the things that add a ton of value and the things that we want to keep in our historic houses. I'm Brent Hull. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Hull Millwork, Hull Homes. Thanks for watching.